my first experience ordering coffee was awful because I got oh, in the no. coffee shop and they were like, what would you like? And I was like, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm like, coffee? <laughs> the only word that I know it, I'm like, coffee? I was thinking that I wasn't, I wasn't enough to have the opportunity to learn and work and do things that I really like and enjoy. It was a really hard path in the beginning, kind of like to myself. You're listening to the NEI Pioneer Podcast, where we showcase and share authentic stories of Northeast Indiana. Today, we sit down with Callie Herring as she interviews NEI's own Laura Cruz. Laura is the manager of administration here at NEI, and her story of making Northeast Indiana her home is encouraging and inspirational, which is why we wanted to have this conversation. She shares about the challenges that she's faced moving to Northeast Indiana from another country, learning English as her second language, building professional self-confidence, and creating roots in a new community. So if you can relate to any of those challenges, this is going to be a great episode for you. So let's get into it. Hi, and welcome to the NEI Pioneer Podcast, where we're dedicated to showcasing the stories of Northeast Indiana. So whether you're from here, looking to locate here, or you've been here for your whole life, um, you're in the right place. We're ready to tell some stories and get into it. I am your host, Callie Herring, and today I am joined with the lovely Laura Cruz. Thank you. Hello, Hi. Laura. Thanks for being on the podcast Happy today. Happy to be here today. Yes. Okay. If you could go ahead and just introduce yourself to our listeners at home, because I know you very well, but they might not. Okay. Uh, I'm the manager of administration here at Northeast Indiana Regional Partnership. I've been here for almost a year, so super excited to be part of this amazing team. Wow. When is your like one-year anniversary here? Next month, February 6th. So We're going to throw you a party. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and then where are you, what county are you located in now? The Cobb County is my county, number one county in Northeast Indiana. <laughs> I always say that. I love my county, so really proud to be part of that. So... Laura, on the NEI Pioneer podcast, we love to start with an icebreaker question. Okay. So today's icebreaker question is, what advice were you given or what advice would you give to yourself um, at the beginning of your career journey? So either something that somebody said to you or something that like maybe you know now that, man, I wish if I knew back then this thing, then it would have changed everything. I always talk about be confident so if I can, I don't know, get back on time and tell this to myself again, I would say just be confident. Uh, just uh, own what you know, own what you, like who you are. So it's not a rush. It's always expectations about your career, about what you want in life. But I think be confident and just trust. Trust your, like, the way that you're doing things. That's, that's the best advice that I can give to someone. I feel like confidence is something that is, like, so underestimated. I feel like yeah. you can really just do a lot more. Like, I feel like a lot of problems that you sometimes have or, like, the root of it is just you need to just get out there and yeah, be confident. Yeah, exactly. And just live one day at a time. Just take a steps. Uh, that's a life. doesn't need to be, like, in a rush all the time or just be expectations. They have just a whole life plan, uh, the what you want. So just sometimes you need to take it easy and be <laughs> confident of yourself. Just take it easy. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yes. <laughs> what has your journey from where you started to where you are now kind of looked like? Okay, so I'm going to give you some context about uh, my experience. I moved here in Northeast Indiana four years ago, directly from Colombia. So i only been living here in Indiana uh, for four years. Um, everything started as so an au pair. I applied for a um, J-1 visa that the government gives to people to want to be an au pair, girls and boys too, but most of the time it's girls. Uh, so I started this journey like four years ago. Uh, two years and a half I was an au pair. And the rest of the time I've been like most here around and now in NEI, working from NEI. Did you always enjoy working with kids? Well, I'm a kids person. <laughs> I love being around kids. I think that's uh, lovely. Uh, here, I learned the expression, the terrible twos, that I don't <laughs> think is terrible at all. I really enjoy, like, and always learn something from them. Like, their, their capacity to learn and develop things, it's, like, blow my mind. So I really enjoy being around kids all the time. 
And I have a couple of like experience taking care of kids when I was like in high school in Colombia. So I really enjoyed that here too. Obviously you're no longer an au pair anymore. No. So what made you like want to stay, like stick around and I fell in love with Northeast Indiana actually. I had an experience a couple months ago in an airport and the officer he was like, So how long have you been here in Florida? And I was like, mm like two hours <laughs> and he was like so where are you going and I'm like Indiana for Wayne and he was like for work and I'm like well I work yes but I live in there and he was like what is that person from Colombia doing in Indiana when it's <laughs> freezing like right now we have a snow and raining at the same time mm -hmm. so it's just like uh I feel this is like a hometown for people who want to raise like kids and have a family I feel safe here a hundred percent. Um, it's such a lovely, like, I don't know, say cities and counties and all the things that I don't know, we're doing to keep and maintain like business here too. So I really encourage that to people. So one of the things, uh, I really like and enjoy here in Norris, Indiana regional partnership. It's, uh, how we support each county. So we always say 11, one, 11 counties, one region. So for me, that's really important. I'm glad you brought up your airport experience because <laughs> I'm from um, Florida. I was born and raised in Florida, and I came here for school. Um, and when I got here, I got some of the same comments. Everyone was just like, what are you doing here? Like, there's nothing to do here. It's so cold. Like, you must be freezing. Like, all this stuff. And it felt like more like negative connotations than anything mm -hmm. else. Um, like they would do anything to live in Florida. Like they hate living in Indiana, but I've just like you, I've fell in love with this region and this area. And even just living in the Midwest, like I do feel safer and, uh, the people are all like so incredible and there is things to do. Yeah. I feel like, but do you, uh, ever get any other comments like that at all? Any like pushback oh, from yes. anybody, anything like that? Yeah. It's just like, and Even, like, sometimes these people are like, where, where do you live? And I'm like, Indiana. And where? Like, <laughs> what is to do in Indiana? I never heard about Indiana. <laughs> I was like, it's a ton of things to do there. Uh, we have, like, parks in here. I, I'm a nature person, so I really love spending time outside. And I say, when it's, like, winter, of course, it's really more like difficult to do things and go out and because it's freezing <laughs> um but for example when it's summer when it's fall like spring it's like it's beautiful it's just lovely to be here and we have so many things to do here i love go to the farmer's market for example on wednesdays and saturday so <laughs> like fun fresh like food and um be able to like drive everywhere too with no traffic like That's I'm true. from a big city like Bogota is 10 million of people living there. <laughs> so traffic, it can be like four to five hours per day. That's so insane. here I can drive from like over to for when in 30 minutes and like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> If this is like in another country, in another state, probably will take two hours. You just get there so quick. Yeah. So along your whole journey from Colombia to the U.S. to Northeast Indiana, um, what is something that you've learned about yourself along that way so not necessarily something that you've learned about the region or even just like speaking English but mm -hmm. just like something you've learned about who you are and oh that's a great question <laughs> I've been learning a lot in these four years I've been exploring myself I'll say that and sometimes I'm just feel stuck but I just realized oh I'm being here And I've been doing amazing things. Uh, so if I look four years ago, I never, like, imagined myself, for example, sitting right now here, <laughs> like, in a podcast and working for this amazing organization. So it's just, like, learning. I learn how to be patient sometimes. I just want everything, like, immediately, right now. <laughs> I want it right now. And I've just learned, oh, no, I have to be patient, too. Um, I always think, like, the opportunities are in there. You just need to, like, explore them a little bit more. Patience is also such a good one. Yes. I feel like every year when it comes around to, like, New Year's resolution times, I'm reminded of the word patience. I'm like, oh, that's a good one. Yes. That's a, a good, good one. one. Mm -hmm. So how did you, like, come to hear about 
the regional partnership? Okay, well, I um, had my J-1 visa and I started applying for my green card. And in the meantime, you're not allowed to work. So um, after probably eight months to start this process, I received my work permit. So I got really excited and I started <laughs> applying for jobs. It was kind of like a hard time in that moment. Uh, but one day I just saw in like LinkedIn, uh, the opportunity to work here, and I'm start working here as the um, office coordinator. Uh, so I apply. I say, why not? So in the <laughs> beginning, I was like, ah, I don't know if I can like trust myself mm -hmm. to do this and be capable, because of course, like English is my second language. I was like, I don't know, like this is a different level. It's not taking care of a kid, like learning say <laughs> ball, blue, red. <laughs> no, this is like okay, you're ready to work. Mm -hmm. um, and like a little bit more of my background, I have a bachelor degree in economics. So I studied economics back then in Colombia. So something that I really want to is like learn the business culture here. So for me, I was like, oh, this is the perfect opportunity. <laughs> and they say, it doesn't matter if I'm going to be the office coordinator, I'm going to learn. And this is something that I really appreciate about this organization that gives you the opportunity to learn every single day. So that's one of the things I'm encouraged and I'm like engaged here in Northeast Indiana Regional Partnership. Because even around here sometimes uh, I say like, oh, I work in economic development. And if I'm yeah. talking to like my college friends, they're like, huh? Uh, <laughs> what, what that even <laughs> what means? It, what is that? For me, yes. For me, it's not like a strange like, like terminology mm -hmm. because of course I have that knowledge. Uh, so for me, it's like, oh yes, I work for economic development. So uh, even to my friends back there, it's like, hey, what are you doing there? And I'm like, I work for economic development. They're like, oh, that's amazing mm -hmm. because all my friends, they study like kind of the same yeah. thing or business or accounting. So it's kind of like, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> but where did you live in Indiana? Oh, where is that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. So, oh, what did, what did your... Uh, journey learning English look like? Is that something that you just you just took it on yourself, right? Yes, it was. It was. Uh, it still is. Um, <laughs> so when I moved here, you won't believe this, but when I moved here four years ago, I didn't speak like not even a single word. Like wow. the basic English that I learned in high school here, it was just blank. I was just like, I have no idea what are they talking about? So, of course, the first couple months, I was just like, my host family, they were just talking to me. I was just staring at them like, yes. <laughs> and I was like, yes, yes, yes. And they were like, are you sure? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> but yes. So it was really hard, but because I was taking care of one-year-old kid, uh, so we were learned the process so he started like talking and I was using his flashcards so I'm like oh bowl so we both <laughs> learned bowl oh what is this an elephant so we both learning and at the same time I was like speaking and like kind of like teaching him Spanish um, so it was amazing it was, was like a win-win so he knows now a little bit of Spanish now that was my my two years base learning English and that was the best way because I was learning when I one year old so I feel like my base my foundation it was like great I was just starting like from zero yeah literally. um but after two years and I was like okay now I feel more confident I feel like I'm capable to go out and order a coffee my first experience ordering coffee was awful <laughs> because I got oh, in no. the coffee shop and they were like oh what would you like and I was like I don't know what I'm saying I'm like coffee the only <laughs> word that I know it I like coffee and I'm pretty sure he asked me like what kind of coffee and I would just still like coffee and the next question I was like okay would you like milk and I was like coffee so that was the whole thing I just turned red he was just looking at me like she doesn't know what she wants mm -hmm. but she just coffee and I was just coffee and I'm like black black coffee that's the only thing so I'm pretty sure he asked me about the size and <laughs> everything if I'm going to pick cash or car and in that moment I was just like coffee and here is some $20 <laughs> so pay yourself please <laughs> I was just like off on that uh, but after two years uh, with that experience, I would start like, oh, I feel more confident. I need to stop like using my phone all the time to try to translate. I was kind of like in my mind translated everything like in the same time. Like you say something, I just translate it in Spanish. And now 
I need to think in the answer and think in English now. So after two years, I'm start like, no, I'm start thinking more in English and like my thoughts. And now I'm just like, when I'm at home, I'm just like, oh, thinking in English. Mm -hmm. And at home, we speak English and Spanish. So it's still like back and forth all the time. So it's like, good exercise so sometimes we're having a conversation with my husband about like something and he's like asking me in English and I respond and sometimes in Spanish or he says something in Spanish and I reply in English so it's like a back and forth all the time so it's it's great but it's sometimes it's it's a challenge for me <laughs> still learning <laughs> yeah because I like was raised I speak English as my first language, but I always hear people say that English is like one of the hardest languages to learn. It so. is, and it doesn't make <laughs> sense. <laughs> it is. The way like the pronunciation, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes like some letters that are like silent, so, like Spanish is more phonetic. It's yeah. really easy like to learn, but English is, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> English breaks the rules all the time. It, yeah. Its own rules it breaks. Mm -hmm. Um, what are some barriers that you have um, faced throughout your journey and then how have you overcome them? I would say just set sometimes boundaries uh, is one of the challenge and especially because I was thinking oh because I'm from another country that I don't like that say but sometimes people say it like oh that third world countries mm. and it's like an expression that I still I don't like it um, I disagree totally with that expression but in the beginning I was thinking well what kind of opportunities I can have if I'm from Colombia or, and I don't speak English and I'm was thinking that I wasn't like I was I wasn't enough to have the opportunity to learn and work and do things that I really like and enjoy so it was a really hard path in the beginning, kind of like to myself. Trust, that's why I say trust, trust, trust the process all the time. Um, but yes, it's, it's been like a roller coaster and kind of like adjust to the English, the language, um, business culture here, the culture here, the American culture is different. So kind of like no just to try to fit. I always say I don't like to fit, but I can adjust myself to be part of something. But I am who I am. So in the beginning, I was trying to change that. Like, I know I don't like the way that I am right now because I don't fit. But one moment, it's like, no, wait a minute. I am who I am. I can adjust some things, but it's not going to change the way that I act or the way that I talk. Doesn't matter if I try and speak every day English. My accent, my Spanish accent <laughs> is going to be there all the time. So I'm proud of that. Yeah, I was going to say um, overcoming stuff like that must be something that you're pretty proud of yourself for. Is there anything else that sticks out that you're like, wow, I'm really proud of myself for getting through that? Or Yes, really, really proud of myself. For example, going through a, like a green car process is not easy. So one of the things that my thoughts was like, if I'm going to stay here, I want to do the right thing. Being in that green car process is really hard. Uh, the evidence that you have to do, all the process, the documents, and just like waiting and waiting. For example, the hard part was like I wasn't be able to work for like eight months. Oh, wow. And as you, as you my co-worker, you know, I like <laughs> to be busy and I like to be like around and like, okay, what's next? What we need to do? What we need to get done? So for me, just being at home for eight months. <laughs> And it was during winter, too, so oh, yeah. not fun. But I'm proud that I, <laughs> I did it. You stuck it through. <laughs> and I'm here, yes. Hi, everyone. We want to take a quick moment to shout out our podcast sponsors. Now, first, you might be wondering who I am, so let me introduce myself. I am Hannah Hannigan, and normally I'm behind the camera as the videographer, but today I wanted to be in front of the camera to shout out the people who made this podcast possible. Barrett McNagney and Sweetwater Sound are the two sponsors of our podcast, and they're both located in Northeast Indiana. If you don't already know who they are, let me introduce them to you. We're going to start with Barrett McNagney. As Fort Wayne has grown, the Barrett Law Firm has grown with it. Founded in 1876, Barrett McNagney is one of the oldest law partnerships in Indiana, and it's among one of the largest just in Northeast Indiana. They have the breadth of experience across a wide range of practice areas to provide you trusted legal counsel where and when you need it. And Sweetwater is actually the one we were able to purchase most of our audio and video gear from to make this podcast. So if you like how this podcast sounds or how it looks, be sure to check them out. 
Sweetwater, the nation's largest and I would also add friendliest destination for music gear, is also your one-stop shop for all things podcasting. From audio interfaces, recording software, mixers, microphones, cameras, and lighting, Sweetwater has everything to get your podcast up and running. Enjoy personalized gear advice from their dedicated team of sales engineers, as well as free technical support to get your podcast connected and up and running. Really, what's not to love about that? So whether you already have a following or you're still chasing the next big thing, Sweetwater is going to be the ones to help you create a podcast that everyone will be talking about. So if you're interested in either of these companies, be sure to check out the links in our description. Now let's get back to the podcast. What are some opportunities or things that this current job has maybe brought to you? And what are maybe some future goals that you have for yourself? Yes, well, as I always say, I'm really thankful for the opportunity to, like, be here and learn. So I've been learning a lot. Um, when I started working here, I had an amazing, amazing supervisor, Ashley. If you someday listen to this, <laughs> I will see this. I'm really thankful for her, um, all the opportunity. And now my supervisor, so she's always been here, uh, Vanessa, that I love her, Um like I feel like this since day one, um, when I started working here, I didn't feel like it was a job. I feel like it's been more like a learning experience. So it's been amazing uh, and I've been learning a lot. And as a future goals, I'm um, just keep like, want to keep going and learning and growing here. Um, so I'm still as an office coordinator. Now I'm the manager of administration. I'm still supporting Estefan, our CEO. Um, see, I'm see his assistant, so it's just been like a path of learning and growing, and my goal is just keep yeah, engage the the team and stay here and like keep selling Norris Indiana. I'm glad you mentioned learning too. I like I just graduated in April of last year from uh, getting my bachelor's degree, and so up until that point, I've been in school my whole life basically, um, and now that I'm out of it, I have more of like a what would I call it? like an urge to learn more things like I find myself looking up like books that I can read just to like learn some new knowledge and I'm like annotating my books that I'm reading and stuff like that because I just have uh just a longing to continue learning and I feel like even for this job like I've only been here for two months as of yesterday I think or two years ago so uh, I think when you frame things as like a learning experience, like you said, like it really does change um, the way that you approach every day um, at that job or whatever it is that you're doing. So what does it look like for you or what did it look like for you? Um, the process of making Northeast Indiana like home for you, like putting down roots, creating a sense of community, anything of that nature. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, well, the first thing was like, when I was an au pair, of course, I had my interview with my host family and they were like, hey, we're located in Northeast Indiana. I'm like, I have no idea where is that, but I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. Um, so I think since day one, since I arrived here, I was lost in the airport. That is like, it's a, it's a, it's a normal size <laughs> airport, but I got lost there. And I don't know why that day was completely empty that day i don't oh, know really? why yes i was the only person there like no even someone to us like hey where i can get my luggage or something like that so it was kind of like no no i didn't speak the like language <laughs> and lost um and i remember when i was landing it was so f it's flat no like india is flat well maurice <laughs> indian is flat and i was just like where are the mountains here <laughs> like what's going on um but when I landed, I was like, I had that feeling. I was like, oh, this is going to be my new, like, temporary home. Um, and I was, like, in around Warsaw, uh, that was uh, Kosciuszko County. So I was there for two years and a half, too, that I really love and enjoy to be there. So since day one, I feel like this was going to be, like, someday my home, too. Uh, I met my husband there, too. We got married and... I just feel like, okay, this is a really nice place to have a family, to raise your kids. Uh, again, like safe here. You can go anywhere you want, uh, explore nature here. So 
being part of that and when I'm start like especially when I'm start working here I'm start like developing that sense of like community so for me I was like I really want to be involved I really want <laughs> to do something for the region like even if it's a small step I say I don't care I'm gonna do it and I'm part of that uh, women's networking group in the Cup County so we just uh, have our, our meetings quarterly and we just talk about different topics like the last one was like safety when you travel by yourself as a woman mm. like different like airports or country or states so it's been like a really nice process to to be part I'm really enjoyed to be part of the YMCA's I support the YMCA's uh, so always asking like what I can do to help and to develop something in our community it's great getting like plugged into things is I feel like helpful instead of just like I don't have any friends I don't yeah, know what to do like exactly getting yeah, plugged it's, in it's, it's, like, it's that. like for me it's hard so, like to make friends uh, I always like laughing and talking and like <laughs> going everywhere uh, but if I say okay I'm gonna be that friend I'm like oh, okay I'm going to the YMCA or something <laughs> and we just start talking with people uh, but yes it's, it's always something to do and it's always something groups to support uh, we have so many non-profits organizations too that you can like even like help I don't know there is one it is in Auburn uh, in the Cobb County and they help people with they don't have homes and they're just going through a process to get a new house and they don't have a place to stay so you can even go help them to like I don't know like clean products or like hey oh, okay something like things like that so kind of like interesting too so it's always a way to support our community. So just just found that. <laughs> <laughs> Look into it. Yes. What is a piece of advice that uh, you would give to somebody else that's maybe in a similar position as you were before moving to America? Like maybe they want to move to America or just move to a different country. Or even if it's somebody that lives in um, another state and they're thinking of relocating to northeast indiana is there any advice that you would give to that person well yes if you're from another country for example you want to start like i don't know going to a process to like j1 visa or like a student visa cultural visa even travel visa um just remember like this is united states so one of the things here is like freedom and you have your rights uh so that was something like when I was in Colombia, I put that in my mind. I have all my rights to, I know I'm from another country. That's not my house. This is not my country, but it's always right. And I feel always like respected by that. And it's always a path. It's not always easy, but it's always you can do it. You can at least try. Um, if you're from another state thinking about relocating or East Indiana, please do. Uh, we have here amazing, for example, college. We have a great college, university here. Uh, like we have like good houses here, good communities. You can live and feel like safe and you can raise your family here. It's always things to do around. I love coffee shops here around. <laughs> so we have so many coffee shops. We have the mar farmer's market. We have like when it's summer, we have like events and mm -hmm. things to do. For example, here in Fort Wayne, when it's summer, we just walk to the square and have lunch there so it's it's always something to do it feels nice uh people here is so welcoming so give to nurse indiana a chance to be part and live here and do something for the community i think that's that's something like you should do at least one time in your life <laughs> <laughs> that was something too that i i was really noticing when i moved over uh, to Northeast Indiana was the this everyone was so welcoming and even though like some of my peers like people my age were kind of bitter and they're like oh I would love to go to Florida whatever but all of the people that were established here were really kind and um, really supportive of anything I needed or there were people that were like donating to me like winter boots and coats yes. and stuff like that yeah. if we were doing something in the snow that I just like wasn't prepared for like everybody was so helpful for yeah, stuff like that people, so it is so welcoming it's something like I really appreciate is like people always asking like hey what do you need or uh, if you're in trouble or something, just give me a call. I'll give you a ride, whatever you need. So I'm like, oh, this is really nice. Or even opening up their homes. Like we would have like 
a break at school and if I couldn't afford to like fly all the way home people would be like oh well, you can come to my house for Easter yes. like come stay with our family blah yeah. blah blah so it's always nice to feel like welcoming and warm with like kind of like family in here too mm-hmm. so that and that's something that is uh, I noticed like the sense of family here in the union it's like it's in the roots so Norris Indiana has those roots of like Oh, we are a community. We're family here. We support each other. We help each other. So it's it's something that I always look for, like a place to stay and a place to live. Okay, Laura, we're moving into our rapid Uh-oh. wrap up <laughs> questions. <laughs> I say rapid, but I'm not gonna talk at the speed of light. We'll be okay. we'll be quick, yes. but not too quick. Okay, number one, comets or tin caps? Uh oh, tin caps. <laughs> Teen caps. <laughs> um, de brand chocolate or Coney Island hot dogs? De brand. De brand is <laughs> that's the best hot chocolate there. <laughs> More of a chocolate person than a hot dog person. Yes. Those are hard to compare. So, so yeah, I understand. But I'm a chocolate person. <laughs> <laughs> the Three Rivers Festival or the Johnny Appleseed Festival? I love the Johnny Appleseed Festival. I still haven't gone. Should uh, I go? Yes, you okay. should. You it's something that you have to put in your bucket list. Uh, it's on my bucket list. Now. Good, good, good. Now that you said it. Um, if someone is visiting or new to your county, so DeKalb, um, where would you take them to go eat? <gasps> well, we have a really amazing places there to eat. We have great restaurants, but my favorite is Mimi's. <laughs> That's the name of the restaurant. It's in Auburn, right there, like uh, close to the main street. Uh, so this is a restaurant. The name is Mimi's, and they have the the best chicken tenders. Like I'm a chicken tenders <laughs> person, but it's the best. It's like they have everything like handmade. Even the sauce oh. that they use is handmade. Like everything is so fresh. It was like if you go on a Friday, you have to wait at least two hours for your food wow. because it's really good. So Mimi's, Auburn. Mimi's chicken tenders. Yes, the I best. love chicken tenders. Um, do you know any fun facts about your county that people might know, not know? Well, I don't know if this is like a fun fact, but we have the uh, Auburn Cars uh, Show Festival. Mm. So every, if I'm not wrong, every Tuesdays or Thursdays, I think in summer, they have our like antique car shop festival. So in the streets, you just walk and you feel like you're at the 50s. <laughs> it was like really nice cars and like food and people have like food outside and this car show so I really like it's something that I really love about that like living like in the Cobb County is going and show the car festival like I'm a car person too so I'm like (laughs) the amazing car so you 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 should try so if you're a car person that's you're a car person in love antique so please go (laughs) (laughs) please go see Laura there yes um if you were compiling a bucket list for somebody that maybe it's their first time in Northeast Indiana or there's someone that maybe just moved here and they don't have like a set amount of things they like to do, um, what is one thing that you would add to their list? Like, oh, you have to go do this. Well, I'm a nature person too, so I like to be outdoor. And I feel like uh, here in Northeast Indiana we have so many like parks and forests and trails that you can really enjoy. So one of the things just get them up and look off all the <laughs> na- nature and trails that we have in Norris, Indiana and give them a chance. It's beautiful. I know in one of them I really like is Pokagon. Uh, that is in, um, up north. But yes, all the like nature and trails you can enjoy here. Uh, in summer, it feels so good because you think like, oh no, it's too hot for go for a hike. But when you go inside, like you go into the forest, it's fresh, like, like, the weather changing there is fresh, is nice, is like moisturized. I don't know. I love <laughs> it. I love to be outdoor and do things when the weather is nice. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you guys for joining us as well. Um, if you like what you heard today, if you would love to hear more stories from the region or learn things about economic development um, or learn about Northeast Indiana in general, uh, this podcast is the perfect place for you. So please come back. Um, We will be posting these uh, bi-weekly and you can check out our YouTube channel. We'll have um, our social medias uh, linked below as well. So thank Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Kali.